Hi everybody. I hope you're having a great week and weekend. This video exists to show you four simple moves you can make using PowerPoint, media, and anything else like it, like Keynote or Prezi, to change the way that you forever use PowerPoint type software. Before we start into that, I cannot stress enough that bad PowerPoints ruin relationships. That's right, any type of relationship, you name it, client, customer, classmate, audience, teacher, faculty, student, you name it, if you do a bad media presentation, you are killing those relationships. But instead we need to be the change we wish to see in the world, so for the next couple of minutes, I'm going to show you four things that you can do to change the way you forever make PowerPoint. So I'm gonna share my screen with you, and I'm going to show you these four things. Now first, I'd like to point out the fact that this PowerPoint presentation I'm about to show you was done for a client of mine for whom I was hired to do communication consulting. And so I took their name out in case this video finds its way to the web and for some sort of proprietary reasons. In class, they told me I had permission to tell you who they are. They probably have internships, so feel free to private message me if you'd like to know more about this company or if it slips out throughout the presentation. Just know it's a multi-global, it's a, it's a multi-billion dollar, multi-global industry leader. Okay, so this private company hired us to change its PowerPoint slides. And so the slides you're about to see and the four ways we're about to change them were actually given to me by their marketing director. And then I asked that person if I was able to change them for their sales team's meetings, and they told me yes. So you are to see here in a minute, real life sales consultant training that I used with a multi-million billion dollar company that I bring to you in this classroom presentation. So let's take a look first at the four strategies that are ever going to change the way that you make PowerPoint presentations in class and work and corporations and entrepreneurship in your small businesses. The first thing that you should be doing is called click throughs and you want to use these forever and always whenever you make a presentation. They're easy to do, they're simple to employ and you can use a YouTube video if you have to know how to do them and you don't already. So let's take a look at this slide. It's about consolidating a supply chain totally boring. If you're sitting in an audience, right, you're probably reading down all the way here to five, six, and the seven bullet points. In fact, we know that people can read faster in their mind than a presenter can read to them. So stop doing this. Stop reading to your audience. Instead, why don't you employ what we call number one, click-throughs. Look at it this way. You start the slide like this and you're telling your vendor, your client, your, your classmates about the supply chain business, but you leave it blank like you see here. And then as you talk about specific points, you add them in. We call these, at least at our institution, click-throughs. It puts you in control of the narrative. If someone asks a question in your audience, you can go back to it and keep everybody engaged and focused on that particular point whereby not allowing the people in the back to read ahead and to be bored with you and your presentation. So those are called click-throughs. Here's a couple more examples. See this? So the company had this in as a nice little cutesy sort of break to the monotony using art right here with this Rubik's Cube. Okay, they're saying that their company can increase supply chain, it has flexibility, they can lean, use a lean implementation, which is a software program, that they differentiate themselves from the competition. But if I'm in the back of a ballroom, hotel room, boardroom, I can see and read all these things and they're not too special. So why not employ click-throughs? It looks something like this. So here we go. Hey, I'm here in Des Moines, Iowa, and I uh, would like to show you that my company we have a supply chain management that we can bring to you that's better than all the competition. We use this by uh, employing lean implementation strategies. You can see that we can increase cash flow, we're on the global market, transparency, yada, yada, yada. You know what this all looks like? One big puzzle. Boom, that's right, one big puzzle. And we're here today to help you out with that puzzle. You see how that changes the way that that whole concept is conveyed? That's using click-throughs. 
Now we've all seen a before and after picture like this. We've been working out, we've been using weight loss tools. We always show the before and after picture. But what if you employed click-throughs to do the same thing? Here's what your warehouse looks like over here in Omaha there, Kenny. And I saw it last week when I was there, and boy, is it messy. But your colleague over here in Dayton, Ohio, she got some of our lean implementation software and used the supply chain management theories that we provide. Boom. Look how clean that that software um, has made her, her warehouse over in Dayton. So you see, using click-throughs on images or on text makes it that much better when you're trying to make a point. Now, the next thing I'd like to show you is called enlargements. Use these so people can actually see your shit. How many times have you been in a presentation where the presenter goes to the screen and says, I know you can't see this, see, you can't see it here, but that's a picture of my llama, or I know you can't see this, but this says you'll make a million dollars. If I'm going to make a million dollars, damn it, I wanna see in numbers that you're going to make me a million dollars. Marketing, management, IT, cybersecurity, you are some of the biggest offenders of this because you take and slap full on Word and uh, proprietary documents, you stick them on slides and then people in the second row or people over 40 cannot see them. And that's borderline ADA and compliant. So I'm telling you, you have to make things big enough so people can see them. So it's called enlargements number two. Let's take a look at how this looks in play. See this? This is every marketing, finance, or accounting slide you have probably seen here at your university or for those of you out there in uh, professional America or the around the world you've seen this, okay? If I'm the 41-year-old dude sitting in the back row, I cannot read this down here. What does it say? Target completion, January 20th, 2013. I just can't do it. So what you need to do is first, boom, circle it. You see what we did there? Boom, we circle it. And then that might draw attention to that particular column on this spreadsheet. And the next thing you wanna do is enlarge it. Now you are telling everyone just how important that target completion date is of January 20th, 2013. And you're also showing them that they can see it in a way that they're like, "Woo, this girl's good. This guy's good. I know that they'll have my project done by next January. So these are called enlargements. And it's nothing new, it's real easy to do. When you're adding things into PowerPoint or Keynote, you just drag and make them larger. And of course, you can apply them to click-throughs. Let's take a look at the third thing we wanna to study today, and that's called the seven by seven rule. Some of you have actually taken speech courses or you've taken a Covey class online or a master class or a Khan Academy, and you've heard of this before. You've heard of it as the six by six rule or the five by five rule. You wanna use these when you have text rich slides, but you should not have a lot of text rich slides and there's many of techniques, techniques to avoid that. But you want to keep people from throwing things at you as Dan McMillan tells us or Don McMillan, because if they can't, uh, they can't see things because the font is too small, or if you're reading to them, they're going to start to throw things to you. And I must say this here, if you read to us in this particular course with me as your professor, you will fail. So if you're a grades person and you are interested in doing well in this class or in this assignment, or you want to be better in business and the professions going forward, do not read to me. You hear it? Don't read to us. So let's take a look at how the seven by seven rule is going to fix that. Whoa, look at this slide, holy ugly. Okay, so if you see a slide like this, they're trying to break it up over here with the picture. Yeah, okay, it's cute. It's a picture of some toolboxes and fasteners, nice. But over here is where the problem is because what it, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, nine lines. Okay, so they violated the seven by seven rule maybe we can be true to the nine lines and help them out a little bit using click-throughs. What if we were to batch them? So here's a click-through, two, three. That's almost all together now, like a third line, and boom. Now it's like you have four lines. Still nine pieces of text, but it's four lines. Let's take a look at it again, where you could actually make each of these its own line and take two of them out and just say the timeline and planning process includes current challenges and a gap analysis, generally accept, um, accepted principles. 
of whatever it is they're doing in their industry. Okay, so those are the seven by seven rule, five by five, six by six, whatever it is that you've gotten used to, but we do not wanna see paragraphs copied and pasted from the internet. There are third graders somewhere in the world that are already knowing how to do that. PowerPoint is not new, it's not novel, it's not that cool, anyone can do it, anything can do it. It's better now than it ever has been, it's not special, so make sure you're having a point with the seven by seven rule. Let's move on next to the last one we want to talk about, and that's called cheat slides. Wait, what is that called? Oh, manufacturing challenges, lean implement. Oh, wait, I'm lost in the weeds. Are we talking about our fourth principle of cheat slides? Or are we, wait, seven by seven? Oh, it's all part of the plan. Sometimes in PowerPoint, we get a little bit lost in the slides. That's because maybe you're nervous, it's an important client, class, grade, and we put together picture heavy or text heavy slides, and then we get a little bit lost in the weeds to use a term where you're in over your head. What you should be doing is something that I point out here called cheat slides. These help you transition from point to point within your presentation. They tell you what's coming next, without using that awful top of the title slide line. Any eighth grader at a science project can do this. And I don't dislike young people, but I'm talking about the level that we need to be at is not one of middle school or below. So let's take a look at what I just did on purpose. Let's say you're talking about lean implementation and you're giving it, and this would hopefully have click throughs, what have you, and then you're like, you know, I think I don't know what's next. Okay, more lean implementation. And then you see this come up. This is a transitional cheat slide that tells you that it's time to pass the clicker off to your partner and she is going to pick up and talk about virtual view, which is a software program, or it tells you as the speaker that your next point is virtual view. You verbally and orally make up a really cool transitional phrase that comes out of your mouth. Like we just talked about lean implementation. Now we're going to talk about virtual view. Or you say, wow, it's time for us to talk about virtual view. And here it is. These are called cheat slides. So when we think about using things that you see in other classes, <clears throat> I wanna say here, you gotta skip a works cited slide if you're doing something in the professional level. No business person in the history of works cited slides ever has read a works cited slide. In every class you've ever seen, some kid gets up and goes, and there's my works cited. And they're a font this big, they don't match the rest of the presentation, and then they run to their seat and sit down. This steals their thunder, it ruins their conclusion, it ruins the ask. You do not see an entrepreneurial pitch do this. You instead wanna give credit where credit is due throughout the presentation using simple in-text citations. And then what this says here at the bottom, which will be posted in our LMS later, is you always give credit where credit's due when you're speaking about the presentation. And then you hand them documents that they can take home and take with them either digitally or physically that they can go back and check your work. This is how much revenue they'll make. This is how much money it will cost them. This is who the scholar is that did this presentation before they did. That way, you seem more legit by handing out a synopsis, a report, or even a slick or some collateral that has this information in it. It's not like you're hiding. It's not like you're cheating. It's not like a college kid who did this the night before and wrote up some work cited crap up and put it on a thing so not to get a D. Stop doing that. Make it real. Cite credit where credit is due. Give honor to the people who have helped you make this presentation and move forward. So today, we've talked about four things that you should forever and always, I'm checking my time one last time, four things that you should forever and always do to change your PowerPoint presentations. The first was click-throughs. The second was enlargements. The third one was seven by seven rule. And the fourth one was cheat slides. So hopefully now you'll remember that PowerPoints, those that are bad, ruin good relationships. Whether those relationships are with clients, vendors, students, professors, colleagues, entrepreneurs, people who have money, or anyone else, stop making bad PowerPoints. It's about to be 2021. 
and we need to move past it. Thank you for your time. I hope you're having a great week. We'll see everybody later. Take care. Bye.